Okay, Oscar fans, what's really going to win Best Picture? I'm Tom O'Neill from Gold Derby with Ann Thompson of IndieWire, Tim Gray of Variety, Pete Hammond of Deadline Hollywood. They all say Shape of Water, and I dare to disagree, but oh. first, oh. set up your Shape of Water argument, Ann. PGA winner, 13 nominations, leader of the field, and I believe that Guillermo del Toro is a beloved figure, an auteur, for whom they give a great deal of credit for creating an original world, and all the crafts are going to go for it, and the actors, and the writers. Sounds like La La Land to me, Ann. Uh, all of those things except the veteran thing are true of La La last year. So, Tim, what's your shape of water? I mean, I, I think Ann summed it up, but I have to give a few disclaimers. I, I predicted La La Land was going to win Best Picture last I year, so too. don't yeah, yeah. don't listen to me. <laughs> um, but, Who but, didn't predict it was well, going to win? Also, but I, I feel <laughs> like this year, I mean, I feel like... There are five movies out of nine that, that are genuine contenders that, that could possibly win. Because a lot of times it's, it's one's a front runner or it's down to two, maybe three. But I, this year, I mean, I feel like it really is wide open. Pete, it's this kooky preferential ballot. Um, yeah, it is. I, I think Shape of Water is going to win and pull it out because I think if it's not a number one choice, it's a number two. And, I, you know, and that's the thing. Whereas La La Land last year... There was a concerted effort by certain people to make sure that didn't win Best Picture. And so they put it ninth, eighth or ninth. I talked to many who did that and that didn't dislike the movie that much, but didn't want it to win. And Moonlight was that number two choice, and it came in. The preferential ballot can really help the number two movie, I think, uh, uh, more than even a number one vote. It's more important if you're number two, how well liked you are. I agree with Ann. Guillermo is so well liked. I think he's going to um, really just charge through this season, not only with the PGA win, but the Critics' Choice win. And that group is often very predictive of what uh, things to have PGA and Critics' Choice. And I think three billboards is very much going to get a lot of number one votes, but I'm not so sure it's a number two kind of right. movie. It's divisive. The, th the, the three billboards uh, momentum could build after the BAFTAs. Mm -hmm. So I predict that there will be another rash of people saying, oh, it's three billboards. Mm -hmm. But I really don't think so. He didn't get a, a director nomination, McDonough. And uh, I just think that there's too many people disagreeing about that movie for it to win. And only Argo and Driving Miss Daisy have pulled this off where you don't have a directing nomination and that you go on to win Best Picture. And Argo, is a, there's an asterisk next to that because that was just Ben Affleck not getting it from the director's branch. I don't think it's the same situation here. I think this, is, this would be closer to Driving Miss Daisy if he were to pull that off. It was very shocking to me that, that McDonough didn't McDonough get it. McDonough got in at DGA. McDonough got in at BAFTA. And let's follow some of the other pros and cons here. No SAG, nom, uh, no SAG Ensemble nomination for Shape of Water. No indie spirits at all for Shape of Water. And they've been predicting the Oscars recently. Um, three Billboards has overperformed everywhere. So why, so why should we worry about that one exclusion so much on director when all these other signs say it, it's that beloved? I do think that the SAG Ensemble this year is a bit anomalous, and there's various reasons why. I believe that a lot of the nominations that we see this year, especially in the ensemble with Mudbound, for example, people are leaning in to inclusion. They should, and it's good, but you, it makes you wonder. You know, Mudbound didn't make it to Best Picture nomination, you know? So there, 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 there are weird exceptions this year to what might be real. Why, and, and, and I think you, you may have, for this? I, yeah. I, I, think, I think you'll have a really good perspective on this be, being female. Why isn't the Me Too movement helping three billboards, or is it? Because this, the essential story is a woman raging against the injustice of men not uh, coming to the justice of well, her daughter. I can tell you sex. why. Because she turns on her halfway through the movie. She's throwing bombs into a police station without knowing who's in there or whatever. You suddenly don't have as much sympathy for her. And it's shades of gray because the uh, racist... Uh, uh, Sam Rockwell character starts out you hate him and then he shows some compassion and some change. And these roles were so difficult to execute as well as they did that I believe those two actors will win. Yeah. Francis McDormand and Sam Rockwell and those will be the wins. 
for three billboards. Yeah, you Significant wins. Her, you cannot hold her character up as a, the leader of the Me Too movement here. She's an angry uh, person whose daughter was murdered and she wants justice for that, but she uses some questionable tactics to do it. And that's, you know, so there's, like I said, shades of gray. With the preferential ballot, we have to admit that some other movies could pop in too. Could Get Out or Lady Bird or um, Dunkirk suddenly end up at the winner because it is the number two? I think Dunkirk is stronger than people think. Uh, there's two arguments for it. One, it got an editing nomination, which is significant, along with, with directing. Two, the fact that it doesn't have actor nominations is simply because it is an ensemble movie with small parts that didn't rise to the occasion, and that shouldn't be held against it. I think it's still popular. On the other hand, there are people who think that it's a strangely radical, uh, weirdly um, underwritten movie without the kind of character development that people like to see. And those two schools exist. You can win Best Picture without an acting nomination, Lord of the Rings, The Last Emperor, Slumdog Millionaire. Comparable to that. Right. What else can win, Tim, in the preferential ballot setup? I do. Th I feel like Dunkirk is the, um, is the secret sauce here. I, I, I do think that has a, a good chance of winning. First off, because it's really, it's just amazing filmmaking. Um, so I feel like, I, I do think it's, it's probably Shape of Water, but I, th I think Dunkirk or uh, Get Out uh, no Lady Bird? Could, could get it. It's possible. I mean, it's possible. I'd be, I'd be really surprised. But Yeah, Lady Bird might be more likely to creep into original screenplay, which is going to get votes for everything that's nominated there. It's a crazy category. I, too, think Dunkirk, I, I predicted it in Gold Derby on your rundown uh, for four awards already to win for, uh, both sound, cinematography, and um, film editing. Blade Runner. I don't think Blade Runner is going to win because I don't think they're watching Blade Runner, and I and you, it doesn't say, you know, um, the name of the cinematographer on the ballot either. I'll make a bet with you. It's so, time for Deacons to win. Well, I say that every year, but it it depends on the movie too, and I think. The extraordinary uh, job here done by Hoyte van Hoytema uh, for Dunkirk. You love saying that. <laughs> <laughs> His extraordinary work of those three different time periods within a week and the weather conditions and everything else, uh, I think, is deserving of the award, as is Roger Deakins for just about anything Roger Deakins says, but I don't think it's going to be Blade Runner. But, you know, Wait, we'll do you see. think Blade Runner is going to win a lot or, or basically cinematography? Or maybe yeah. production design. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's between those two and those I think two categories. Design will yeah. go to Shape of Water. Um, yeah. There, it's got to win some stuff. I, I see it winning Best Picture with only three other Oscars at this point. I don't think it's it's 13 nominations, but I don't think it's a big sweep here. So the Lady Bird issue is that yes, that's me too, and people do want to lean into Greta Gerwig, who did such an amazing job. But a lot of people are saying that it, you know men often, <laughs> if I may be so bold, are saying that it's just a lifetime movie. What's so special about it? I mean, I've just heard people talking like this, which makes me crazy. But you have to recognize that the, you know, 28% of the Academy are women, and most of the men may not, you know, feel the same way as the women do. It's definitely true. It is hurting when you talk to male members. They are not, like, jumping up and down about Lady Bird. And it's so unfair because it's such a terrific movie. But I think they do dismiss it, and they dismiss it, too, because it's a comedy. But can she win director? We have to say we're doing this conversation before DGA. Uh, is there a chance that that changes everything? If so, well, I guess it would if she ended up winning DGA. But um, see, I'm going to argue with you a little bit, Pete, on the original screenplay. This is backing into your okay. your answer. I, I've been thinking about this, and I think that it, Jordan Peele and Greta Gerwig are going head to head in that category because people do want those two films to win something. something yeah. So what? So if Guillermo wins director, which is what I think mm -hmm. will happen there, and at the DGA, I'm assuming, um, then what? What are? Wh so wh what if Lady Bird? You know, what if suddenly it's it's supporting actress that it wins? Uh, yep. out of out you of know. the blue just because they want to give it something right well it could be you know and I, i'm going to mention one other movie that i have much higher up than i think most people do at gold derby and that's phantom thread and the reason i'm saying phantom thread is the phantom thread got in there in the first place yeah, which, which was gold unexpected. derby did not predict nor did we predict yeah. very big surprise hour. and i keep talking to these academy members i mean one older producer who told me two weeks before, I, I said, what do you like? He says, I like a lot of these movies, but none of them are best picture. And he went through all of them. Three, I like it, it's not a best picture. Lady Bird, I like it, it's not a best picture. This one, 
I said, what do you like? He goes, Phantom Thread. Oh my God. He said, it's extraordinary. Then I was having dinner with another guy who used to be the head of a studio. And he said, it's one of the best movies he's ever seen in his life. And these are people that were taken with it. They explains the nomination to me. And I wouldn't I wouldn't bet against it completely as being a surprise in there because I think it could be a number two vote and it could be helped by the preferential ballot. I think you're over um, emphasizing, I mean it was a surprise and I think people respect Paul Thomas Anderson as an auteur and it's a beautiful elegant movie and it will win best costume design <laughs> uh, but I think that's about it. Yeah well you may be right I mean I'm not I'm not going there yet but I'm just saying watch out I, I really get that enthusiasm factor and that's what I always look for uh, on voting on yeah. these things is w who's the most enthusiastic about a movie and, and I find people more enthusiastic that I'm talking to uh, uh, about that movie. Has campaigning changed anything this year in terms of the momentum of the top two races for picture or director because we know often it does Eddie Redmayne won an Oscar because he was so good on the ground spotlight won because that whole team had an event almost every night of the week for three months and uh, it worked. Uh, it, it, what has the impact of campaigning Who's benefited from a great campaign this year? Timothy Chalamet could be your Eddie Redmayne, but that doesn't mean he's going to steal it from Gary Oldman because he's young yeah. and he has a whole career ahead of him. I don't think anybody's stealing it from Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman is that kind of role that Academy members uh, love. We're going to talk about acting in a minute here, yeah. but just in terms of, of film uh, campaigns, has, has any movie or more than one movie overperformed because of campaigning. Obviously, not Phantom. Th you can't say the campaign on the ground has been uh, what made us underestimate or uh, Phantom Thread. No. They've campaigned the hell out of the Post, and that didn't seem to do it any good. Yeah, so. okay, post, good point, good point. Post was hurt by the fact that it's Steven Spielberg, Meryl Streep, and Tom Hanks, and they feel like they have a lot. And also, I thought people talk, and this is my favorite movie of the year, I love so it I love the Post. I, best picture of the year for me, so important. Uh, most of the Academy members that I had talked to feel like it's good, but it's sort of like taking castor oil for them. They feel like it's, it's got a message and it pounds it home. And I think that's wrong, but that's the impression that I got from They them. also think it was rushed. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but they see the results in the film. I've heard that a lot. I mean, I, I think it's an amazing movie. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. I mean, I would say in answer to your, to your question, I was really most impressed at the presence of Logan and Get Out in the, in the Oscar nominations because they really campaigned to say, okay, this is not just a genre film. You should take this seriously as a movie. And they kept kind of repeating that. And I think Academy voters did think, yeah, you're right. Because, okay. I mean, even Get Out, I mean, the people talk about it as if it's a horror film, but it's not really. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of a comedy, but not really. It's kind of a, uh, it's just a hybrid. It's hard to define. And, uh, but I, th I think they did a great job, the fact that I agree with Tim, and on the Get Out campaign, they've spent more money on the campaign than they did on the movie, and that is a fact. That, and, you know, this, they can deny that all they want, it, and they right? won't. But, you know, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, they have really done an amazing campaign, and bringing that back from a February release yeah. yes. the last movie that got nominated that came out in February as early as February was Silence of the Lambs which actually won in 1991 another horror film yeah so it's interesting but that would be the campaign so if you're going to vote for it why we underestimate get a, I mean, because it has the horror and the it's comedic it's hard to element. imagine it actually winning in any of the categories it's nominated in except Original maybe screenplay. screenplay I'm going to say it's going to win that yeah, because it has wow. to win something but and, and I believe that they w give him credit again for being the auteur who originated something that never would have existed without him and no one else could have imagined this unique movie I mean, I, but when you talk about underestimating it, because, you know, most movies that open in February, people like us talk about how there are Oscar possibilities until the fall movies open and, the, and all the February movies get pushed out of the way. But this year, the, the fall movies kind of underwhelmed. And so people were saying, hmm, actually, no, Get Out still, uh, is still good. And, and I do think... It's, it's one of those movies that I think people are going to be watching it 20 years from now and enjoying it. And it had huge studio support, a big studio behind it, even though it looks like an independent movie. It had Universal throwing everything against the wall for this movie. And it went out and did well overseas, which is yeah. amazing, yeah. too. And it was a huge hit, and that helps. So have we changed your mind yet? Make your predictions at Gold Derby and tell us what you think, because 
we're only four people and you're the rest of the world. Thanks. <laughs>